Hi, this is Thomas with Believe in the Run, and today I'm with Kevin Fallon of, I mean, it's a brand new company, Speedland. We're gonna be talking about the SLPDX straight out of Portland, and it's a passion project between you and Me Dave and Dumbro. Dave Dumbro. Exactly. We're gonna break down the shoe with Kevin and take a look at it, talk about some of their decisions, and then you're gonna hear from Don, who is one of their sponsored athletes, who's part of the team, who runs in the shoes, done over 600 miles in the shoe. Shoe's not available yet, it's up for pre-order. You're gonna be able to get it in August, right? That's right. All right, so let's dive into the shoe. This is the SLPDX, it's your first shoe, and we're talking about what makes it different. Okay, right. so here's the shoe broken up in components. So normally, like when you sat down with athletes to talk to them about the shoe, how would you go through these components? We use this component bag to take them through it because it's the clearest way to explain it piece by piece and element by element. The first piece we usually start with is our Michelin outsole. We actually refer to it as a chassis because virtually every piece of the shoe is connected to this. So it's a bit like a chassis in that regard. But what we have in this piece is a thin sidewall rubber that really hasn't been used very much in shoes. And that was sort of inspired by tires. Um, mountain bike right? tires, right. That's right, they use a fabric reinforcement to give added strength. And for us, that proved to be perfect because we are stitching through this. You can see in the final shoe, we needed that extra strength in this thin sidewall and we want it to be as light as possible so that it can uh, be appropriate for trail. The other portion that we took from Michelin's mountain biking tire technologies was this cuttable blocks. And so it really offers the user a chance to take their lugs from six millimeters down to three if they want to. They can do it across all lugs or they can do it selectively based on their needs. What's the advantage for most athletes with being able to trim or cut lugs off the shoe? It's really giving them the ability to tailor the traction based on the region that they live in or their personal preference or, or maybe just the course that they're racing that day. We liken it to a rally car or a Formula One car. They look the same for race day every week, but different their setups tires. are very different yeah. based on the course. There's that's one nice. other thing that's pretty unique with this is you also can trim the lugs down to customize your ride. You can also trim it for drainage. That's right, there are two drainage ports here. So you can trim that in the same manner as you would the lugs, it opens up the holes, there's a hole in the midsole that just allows faster drainage of water. So if you do a lot of water crossings, it just helps make that a little bit and easier. We did a run this morning out in Patapsco and we did a few water crossings. We I, did. So you gotta kind of put the shoe to the test with drainage and you know, just the ability to get rid of water. Yeah. Is your were your lugs cut for the I leave mine the long. These are these are long. I so do have the drainage, drainage cut. Yes. Yeah. So it, did you feel it? Yeah, you do. I mean, the mesh is quite open, so I would say the shoe drains rather well without cutting that. But if if you are in water a lot and you want it out quickly, the drainage ports make a difference. Secret sauce in this shoe is sort of the components that you can use for the midsole and how they all fit together. It starts with a basic EVA. It does. So the first layer is a is a pretty thin layer of a high rebound EVA that sits right within the chassis. And so this offers the lugs a chance to deflect a little bit, smooths out the ride. When you say lugs deflect, are you basically saying it gives some shock absorption yeah. to the lugs? Yeah, it okay. allows the lugs to deflect. They're not against, say, a carbon plate or something hard that's gonna make them feel rather right, noticeable. Right, so this, this layer sits directly in the outsole, and the upper sits on top of this. Uh, so it just creates a, a little bit of a s smoother layer in terms of transitioning and allows a little deflection for the So lugs. it's a high rebound EVA, which is something that most runners are gonna be familiar with yeah. in most shoes. Yep. But now we start to get into some of the special componentry That's of right. the shoe. So let's, let's move on and see what makes this shoe really lively and start moving. Okay, well, let's talk about the, the drop-in midsole next. This is a unique formula developed with one of our partners. It's p but it is not uh, p backs as you might think of from competitor products and, and road racing. It's a uh, super critical p -backs, so it's injected with nitrogen, which means a compression set, the, the longevity of this foam is much better. better. Is p a brand name? It is. So this yep. is specifically it is branded p, -backs. p -backs. Yes. This isn't a nylon? It's not p it's not a okay. knockoff, that's All right. right. Cool. 
So it's, it's lightweight, it gives that super high energy return that I think runners really respond well to and have, have loved in other places. And when we set it within this rubber outsole or chassis, it also has the added benefit of a little bit more side stability and protection from the elements. So okay. you, you won't see the wrinkling, you won't get the abrasion that we would if it was put on the outside. And that's something we're gonna see in every component in this shoe and something that was important to you guys is that every piece of the shoe is intentional. You went with Michelin rubber because of your feeling of quality and their uh, proven performance in the space. That's right. You're going now with, it's not a PVAX like material, using a PVAX yes. material, and you worked with them specifically to develop mm -hmm. this foam for this shoe. That's right. So you didn't just put a carbon plate in this, you put a Carbotex plate. Why? Well, we thought that Carbotex offered a material that could do things other carbons couldn't. And specifically, there it's a flexible carbon, so it does allow some flex, but it gets stiffer the more that you flex it. So, so as I'm going through my stride, I'm really gonna feel that right. propulsion. And more support if you're going up steep hills as well. So okay. the articulation that we put in the forefoot allows good articulation, off camber and edging situations. But I think the really special part is that it's asymmetric in terms of its flex. This DFX material can bend the other way rather easily. So in terms of conformability on the trail, protection from roots and so rocks. So you don't lose that feeling of the trail that's right. in trade off for the propulsion. Yeah, and, and I think what we've seen in some other carbon products are running in a road shoe on a trail, you tend to feel unstable with that really stiff plate. And this allows enough conformability and deflection that you don't get that instability as a result. And an athlete who has this shoe is going to be able to, if they don't want the plate in there, they can pull the plate out. If they want to use a different plate that you guys are going to have available, right. they'll be able to customize that. This is probably the easiest way to show it. So okay. the midsole in the final shoe comes out like this and the carbon plate is attached in this way. And so it's a, it's a simple kind of quarter turn mechanism where you slide it to the side and then pop it off. So you can run it without the plate in. We hope to be able to offer to general public stiffer and softer versions of this plate. Right now we're working with our athletes on that. And it's a simple reverse procedure slide in. to put it back in. So is there a footbed or is that the footbed? This is the footbed. Okay. There's a, a synthetic suede surface on top to anti-slip and so on. But that, give you a little bit. So if you wear orthotics, not the shoe for you, but putting the PVAX right against the foot gives a, a, nice a lively sensation that we think is- Well, we've seen another shoes that just used a layer of basically PVAX under the foot for comfort. Right, and it lasts, when it's in a thickness like that, it just doesn't last as long. Yeah. And that's why we wanted to put the bulk of it right underfoot. All right, so let's get into the upper. Again, you guys have made conscious decisions. It's not just price decisions. You're saying, I want the best for uh, the shoe. Kind of walk us through some of your choices here with the upper. Sure. Well, the LI2 is really the, the central piece. The BOA LI2 is the newest, I think most advanced reel that they have. Uh, it turns in one direction, precision increments to tighten. You can also back it off in the same increments, and then you can pull it to completely so release like, it. To like get out fast. And this is all done with a soft textile lace and soft guides. So there's no coated cable, there's no injection. But when you talk hands. about a soft lace and it looks very fragile, that's Dyneema fabric and like you probably cut off your finger before you would. That's right. I mean, it is that level of strength where you're not going to be able to break this or chew it with your teeth. It's really, really strong. <laughs> In case material. you were wanting to chew it with yeah, your teeth. It looks like you could, but you cannot. Yeah. Uh, but the Dyneema and the build quality and engineering that goes into the BOA means you've got a really robust system that will last. And you guys work directly with BOA to create this setup for this shoe. So this is something that you did in partnership with them? That's right. We worked really closely with them on this uh, Perform Fit wrap system. It's three independent straps that allows us to really adjust the fit in the forefoot and midfoot separately from the heel, which we know our athletes really want. When you're on the trail for 100K or 100 miles, ability to adjust based on uphill or downhill or easy is critical. So, and getting the straps just in the right place uh, took some time and working with BOA in their fit lab, we were able to really dial that in. So once we got to the factory, it was uh, nearly perfect. All right, so this is the shoe that's gonna be out. Now, what's the drop and the weight? Out of the box, about 10.3 ounces and okay. the drop is five millimeters. Five millimeters, we all thought right. thought that was a good sweet spot. So now we've talked to Kevin, kind of broken down the shoe. That's all great. 
but we're gonna bring in Don, who's put over 600 miles in the shoe and kind of get his feedback on it from a performance standpoint. So Kevin, thanks a lot for yeah. running us through the shoe. So here we are, it is Don, he's a good old friend from us. If you've been following Believe in the Run for a long time, you know that Don used to review shoes for us and was our pretty much our trail guy old when school. we got started. Like you were our trail yeah. reviewer. Back in the day. So we've always loved Don. Don's back, now he's with Speedland. He is, I guess you call him a pro runner. He's also a hell of a badass. So if you're looking for someone who can tell you about performance <laughs> in a shoe, yeah. Don's probably one of the few people that actually can win races and, and kick some butt in the shoe. So now you're with Speedland and you're yeah. a sponsored athlete, but you're also a team member. You're giving feedback and they're helping design. Can you talk to me about a little bit how that process works? Yeah, so um, it's, it's basically just open communication. There's no you know, forms to fill out or no red tape to go <laughs> through for me to give my feedback. No questionnaire? No, you know, Google Forms or anything. It's it's literally just, I, I think back to my very first running experience in the shoe is I texted Kevin and Dave after my very first run and just said, hey guys, you got 20 minutes to Zoom with me? And we just jumped on a FaceTime or a Zoom or something. Do you remember what the initial feedback was? Positive, obviously, first, yeah. <laughs> first and foremost, because I was, I, I, Coming back from my shoe review days, I always take the shoe out of the box and have zero, zero expectations. expectations yeah. I just want to let the shoe um, speak to me, if you will. Uh, so um, first and foremost, I wanted to tell them it was it was good and just had some some minor tweaks, had some fit um, concerns, and the upper was you know questionable. There was a little noise in the upper that was kind of catching, and they were like, "Okay, on it," and took that feedback. And how many iterations have you had of the shoe? I think I'm on seven-ish right now. So before yeah. it went to market, yeah. before the people yeah. could order this shoe, yeah. you alone had seven modifications yeah. to, to the shoe. Yeah, I have a pyramid of, of SLPDXs at home right now that I can go through and you know, some someday I'll be able to look back and be like, this is the first one, this is the- And the third. thing that's kind of cool about it is I know that you liked the shoe originally. Yeah. So you liked it originally, it's been tweaked, it's yeah. been changed. Some of the things to the fit, yep. the upper, have uh, been modified to your liking. So now you have a shoe that's coming out. Are you pretty excited about sharing it with the public? I'm, I'm thrilled. I've, I've raced in it twice. Uh, yeah, how, did, how did those races go? Uh, first race I won, which is really great. How many, how many miles was that race? That was a 50K, um, just a little 31 miler for me. Fast one. Um, fast one. And then second one was just a training day. So um, that was a big mountain run, 6,500 feet of climbing and 50K and um, some very different courses. That first course is flatter and faster over on the salt flats in Utah. And then the second one was up in the mountains of Wyoming. So. Um, did you modify the lugs for yeah yeah so the the, uh, the first one the flat fast race i had to cut lugs um and a little bit of a stiffer plate actually in the shoe and then the second race up in uh, wyoming i had longer lugs and it was just so cool to be able to look at the course look at the race look at what i want to get out of the race and you know have a shoe that allowed me to to get what i needed to out of it so all the choices that they've made in the shoe you said you like the boa form fit yeah. uh, upper you like the material in the upper, no heel, no heel lift, no jankiness. <laughs> and you said that you like a shoe that's a little bit tighter over the midfoot and a little looser. And you're able to do that with this system? Yeah, so you know, some of the first iterations of the shoe, the, the, the heel is actually a little bit looser and that's some of the feedback that, that Kevin and Dave took from the team and um, have, have since tightened up the heel collar a little bit and made this fit a lot, a lot more easily. And they've also um, brought the strapping back to lock that heel down. Um, which, as you just said, is really nice for me because I like to to keep the the midfoot a little looser and a little bit more play in there, um, and then tighten this one down. Which this setup of the boas and um, the heel that they've created on the shoe allow me to to really dial in that fit perfectly for how I want it. You've run in the Vaporfly, right? I have. Okay, and you run in this, and this is a plated shoe. Yeah. What is like the difference between the plate in here, the Carbitex plate? Yeah. Versus that, like, is is there a big difference? I would say the biggest difference you're going to feel is just simply like walking. So Vaporfly, it feels a little bit uncomfortable walking in it. Mm -hmm. It's it's 
you're not like you ever seen right away wearing that casually i've seen it <laughs> it's weird it's super weird whereas this shoe you can tell there's something going on and yeah. you can tell it's going to be a fast but it's not like a hindrance to your walking gait or running gait or anything like that yeah. and that's for me that's really important because even even in the fastest ultras there's going to be spots where you're going to walk a little bit through an aid station up a hill um so having a a plated shoe that gives you the benefit of the plate when, when you want to go fast without that really negative weird gait alteration that a, a vaporfly might give you is is a really cool uh element that this yeah, that's uh, this interesting does. something that in the race i didn't think about that there are times the variance in speed on trail is it's much different totally than different yeah you're talking a you know, I, I primarily hang out at the 100 mile distance, so you're talking you know, 13 to 20 hours of trail time. That's gonna be a lot of time to, to stop and have a slice of pizza for a walk for a little bit and get back to running. So having that plate that allows you to do that without really taking away from the experience of the shoe um, is really good because in a race that long, any, any little negative mental thing, mm. it's like, oh my God, this is uncomfortable. It becomes, um, it becomes a problem. Giant, it, it, yeah. it, it extrapolates over a long time. So this shoe is um, really special for, for running, but it's not going to cause an issue walking or hiking or anything like that, which is, is unique. So Don, we took out the shoe this, this morning. Yep. I mean, it's a little different terrain than you're used to. It is. So I know that like the salt flats are pretty smooth. Yep. I don't know what Wyoming was like. Mountainous. Like, mountainous. Yeah. And then today we're, what would you describe our trail like today? Coast, muddy, rooty, watery, Sloppy. Sloppy. Yeah, that's a good good word for it. And you ran in the shoe, but your lugs are cut. My lugs are cut, yeah. So how did you feel it performed on these trails? I thought it was awesome. I I have had yet to do a real true water crossing in the shoe. Um, and that was kind of that one element that I hadn't checked that box on in the shoe. So it was a really cool opportunity. 600 miles, first water crossing today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Um, it's crazy. It, I've done some like light stream crossings yeah. where you're, you're kind of stepping on rocks and things like that, but fully submerged, knee deep water, coming out of the water, this upper just drain. drained so nicely. It was one of the better draining uppers because there's no, it doesn't absorb much, which is really, really great, especially thinking about my race in Leadville. Um, you know, between, yeah. What is that, your next race coming up? Uh, I have one in between that. I have Beaverhead 100K in July. Uh, just but, a, points, but a goal race for this year? A goal race, Leadville 100, a couple of massive water crossings in Leadville coming out. Are of we calling nights. shots? Um, I'm, I'm going there to compete. All right. Like, I'm not going to call the shots. I'm, that's not my style, but, but you're not going there to just complete. I'm not the going there to finish. I'll put it that way. Yeah. Like you're going, well, you're going there. I'm going to finish. <laughs> that, that's not the goal though. Yeah. Um, the goal is to, uh, to be upfront. And it'll hopefully be in this shoe. It's a truly unique shoe. It's something I've, I've probably tried on not quite as many as you, but I don't know, five, 600 different pairs of shoes yeah. in my life. And, um, this, this one definitely stands out as the shoe that allows me to get what I want out of it. There's nothing about this shoe that you can't tweak a little bit to, to fit what you want, the terrain you want, how you want it to fit or feel. You can follow Don on Instagram, Run With Don. Run With Don. Instagram, Hit real easy. See him win Leadville coming up. We're gonna do it. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna try. We're gonna go for least. it. Yeah. So, and uh, runspeedland.com or runspeedland on Instagram as well. We're looking forward to it. We haven't actually gotten the shoe on our feet yet. We are excited to try this shoe and you can trust us when we get it, we're going to rip it apart and figure out whether or not it's as good as Don says it is, but we're super excited yeah. seeing the shoe and all the components. It looks like a dream and it's, awesome. it's different than a regular running shoe. It's this is totally equipment. Different. It's, it's, it's equipment. It's, it's definitely an investment in your enjoyment in the outdoors. And I, I think anybody that gives it a shot is going to be really happy. Say goodbye to your mom. Bye, Mom.